So, I've played the Dungeonborn playtest for a total of 17.9 hours, relevant at the time of recording this video. And while I haven't played enough of it to touch all of the intricate details that I might want to address, I consider I shaped a sufficiently relevant opinion of this game. I decided to make a video about it simply because I am not a curator on Steam, but I still want to give a review and more importantly advice on what things I believe would benefit from a change or improvement. If you're here only for a quick review, here it is. Dungeonborn is a hell lot of a fun game to play. It's entertaining, especially together with a friend, and even if it's just a copy of Dark and Darker like many angry gamers tend to say on the internet, I do say that it's absolutely worth at least a shot. And if you decided to stick with this video for the longer run, it's still more entertaining than Dark and Darker, or at least I found it to be as such, and that's because of two important aspects, difficulty and progression. <sighs> Dark and Darker is a lot, and I mean it, a lot more difficult in the beginning than Dungeonborn currently is. The learning curvature is steep, and I came to the conclusion that it is as such because of damage. That is, enemies deal great damage to you, the healing options are few, and you don't deal great damage to the enemies in return. Dungeonborn, on the other hand, handles the difficulty way better in my opinion. Your regular goblin won't instantly kill you with one, maybe three shots, but it also won't take seven business days to kill you either. Exception will do that specific attack from the ghost. Ghost. Oh my. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fuck that attack. It needs this damage to be reduced in a next update, but but I will say more about that later. Basically, base enemies deal basic damage and boss type enemies are harder to kill, and expectedly so, they are boss type enemies after all. Progression now. <laughs> Progression feels stagnant in Dark and Darker, while it feels smoother in Dungeonborn. And that ties into the difficulty, because if I am able to escape from the dungeon more often with loot and more importantly with XP, then the progression will be smoother. I managed to escape about, I will say 17, maybe 80% of the times from the dungeons in Dungeonborn, while on the other hand, I managed to escape one single time out of the seven runs that I did in Dark and Darker. And I kind of got the gist of it from maybe run three to four. So in three, you know, not heavily focused on learning runs, I managed to skip one time, one out of three. And that's my personal experience. I know that other people's personal experience isn't the same. But anyway, enough comparison now. <laughs> because this video is not a comparison between the two, but I just felt like I needed to touch on this subject at least a little bit. And that is because of the plethora of comments they found on others, other people's videos about Dungeonborn, saying that Dungeonborn is just a cheap copy of Dark and Darker, Dark and Darker is yada yada yada, Dungeonborn is yada yada yada. I don't want to hear anything like that here, unless, I don't know, you consider your opinion to be valuable, I consider my opinion to be valuable, and I express my opinion right here. Anyway, let's get more into what I like, and later into what I dislike, or what I found annoying about Dungeonborn. One. Enemies make sense. You would expect a goblin to be weak, a goblin spellcaster to be slightly more powerful, an insect to be weak, except this motherfucker that studied the art of you're not going to snipe me and you're gonna hate that. But you would expect a knight in shining armor, a literal werewolf or a trend. I do not n know actually if this is their name here, but they do look like trends to be more challenging to deal with. At least I did. Also, enemy placements are refreshed between each runs, so there's that. Number two, items make sense. Daggers are fast and deal critical damage, but don't have range. Unless you're a druid and you can throw them. Oh my god. I'm a sharpshooter. Swords deal 
greater damage and have ranged, but are slower than the daggers. Unless you're a rogue. Crossbows deal some damage and have crazy range, but you have to reload them. Maces are... Well, they are maces, they bonk, and spellcasters are crazy powerful at a distance, because the spells are ranged. I mean, the majority of spells are ranged, they do have a cap, some of them have a cap of range, but, you know, high damage at a great distance. What else do you need more to know about? Number three, the environment is packed with secrets, secret passages, chests, and enemies. Even being in the state of a playtest, the graphical fidelity is very well done. The game isn't hyper-realistic, but it does look good. And you know, graphics don't matter at all beyond a certain point. Especially if the game is fun, which it is in this case. And also, the graphics are good enough that they surpass the point where they do matter in a game. Number four, you can play with friends, which makes the whole experience 10 times better and 10 times more worth it. Number five, you can transform in a panther. Meow. Okay, now what I dislike or some bugs or annoying things that I found. And number one is the ghosts. Not specifically the ghosts, but one attack that they have. They do have this very specific attack that instantly kills more feeble characters and deals great amounts of damage to heftier ones. Mm, nice. Yes. <laughs> Unless. <laughs> Suggestion, reduce the damage at least so it doesn't one-shot squish your classes. Like the druid. Chomix Chomic. have a very rough character hitbox. As such... Ow. As you can't get close enough to them by approaching from behind. The suggestion here is to reduce the size of the hitbox from the rat's botox. Machomic. Number 3. Better items are easy to find. Actual good items are extremely hard to find. In many runs that I did, I couldn't find the greater gear in game. I had to buy it from shops. Suggestion, maybe. If it doesn't break the natural progression of the game, adjust the drop and spawn rates. Number four. It would be awesome if not all animated soldiers would actually be animated. And what I mean by this is give them the mimic treatment. Make it so some soldiers come to life and attack you and some others don't. This adds a little bit of spice in your runs. And talking about mimics. Make it so attacking a chest wouldn't wake the mimic up and won't damage it. I know, I know, but hear me out. I know that in Dark Souls it made it so you would tremble with anxiety at the sight of a chest, not knowing if it will be a mimic or not. But here, mimics are met fairly often in your runs, and they aren't much of a threat. And because they aren't much of a threat, there's that. I like it. But I don't like the fact that you can just quickly one-tap check all the chests from a distance to see if they're mimics or not. It makes them less of a potential quite scary enemy to encounter. And it's sad. Make the enemies be more fearsome. Uh, not the enemies. Make the mimics be a little bit more fearsome. Number six, add more types of weapons and more different weapons for each type. A type being, for example, daggers, swords, maces, spears, etc. It would make the gameplay more interesting, maybe having more fighting styles and build choices to make for your characters. But actually, as I have seen in their last posts on uh, Steam, they actually are going to make this change already, so... It's already edited, I already said it, I am going to include it in the, in the review, but you can ignore it. This is already on the way to come. All in all, this is a great game. I love it.
I like it more than Dark and Darker, even if many people are considering and will consider it a copy of that game. I believe that it doesn't matter as long as that copy is fun. And this game is fun. <laughs> Give it a try and who knows, maybe some of the set propositions will be taken in consideration. Anyway, have a good one and see you later, alligators. Ciao, mate. Oh my god! Ciao, <laughs> 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 zero! I'm into this.